Hi everyone, welcome to the Q&A recording of the film, The Earth is Blue as an Orange, playing as part of 11th European Union Human Rights Film Days. Uh, we are here with the director of the film, Irina Tisilik, who is joining us from Kiev. Welcome, Irina. Hello, it's nice to meet you, even through the monitor, but still we have the chance to communicate like this. So, mm -hmm. Yes, nice meeting you too, even in virtually. Um, so you're a film director, a writer and a poet based in Kiev. Uh, the Earth is Blue as an Orange is your first documentary uh, feature film. In the film, you are following a family, a uh, single mother, Anna, and her four children uh, living in the red zone of uh, Donbass region. So you show us how this family copes with the daily trauma of war while they are trying to make their own films and while uh, you are making a film about them. So my first question is uh, about the journey of the film. How, where did you first meet with the family and how did you decide making a film about them? You know, everything has started from some other project. It is called Yellow Bus and different professional Ukrainian filmmakers arrange cinema camps for children in the war zone. So me and my Ukrainian producer, Anna Kapustina, we considered to make a film about this project. And uh, we were shooting some of these camps and we met many different teenagers but then I felt confused because I had too many lines, too many children. I didn't know what to do with all of them. And two of the girls that I met in the camps, Miroslava and Nastya, they invited me and my team to their hometown, uh, which is in the red zone of Donbass. And we came there, we met the mother and siblings and all these cats. And we saw this house full of music and I don't know, everything. So we immediately fell in love with uh, this family. And we decided to change the idea to focus on this family only. And that was actually right decision because we had a chance to make much more intimate portrait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, so talking about the family, uh, while filming, you got involved in the lives of the family uh, and you, you actually became part of the uh, family, uh, their everyday lives. And there is a very intimate atmosphere, as you, as you said, uh, with the cats and everything. So also, um, obviously, you put uh, yourself in danger while making this film as well as it takes place in the war uh, zone. Can you tell us a bit about the main challenges uh, you faced during the filming process? Uh, what were the physical and psychological limitations? Uh, yes, you are right. It is probably somehow dangerous to shoot in the war zone. But from the other hand, it was important for me to realize what does it mean to live there? Because all these people, I mean, civilians who live in the war zone, they got used to live uh, that kind of life. And you know, the war is routine for them. And of course, it's very weird when you come there with your fresh eyes from peaceful cities, but it is also important to be with them and to try to see everything around with their eyes. And you know, the most challenging thing for me was probably the huge sense of responsibility because when you shoot documentary portrait, you have such a big power uh, because you, may, you can make your puzzle, I mean the film in different ways. You can choose any shots, any angles to show to represent these people to the world. And sometimes it's really scary because when these people are open to you, when they trust you fully, you are afraid of doing some wrong steps, some mistakes, because uh, you know, when we shoot real people, we shoot their real fears, real dreams, real lives. It's not the same as when you are making a fiction film. So, you know, this is my debut. And of course it was challenging because I did not know uh, what can I do, what I can't. 
So that was my first attempt. But um, at the end of the day, me and this family, we're still friends. So I hope I did not do too many mistakes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can imagine it must be very overwhelming sometimes because there is a war going on and then there's another angle, uh, the tie you uh, had with the family. So uh, in both terms, it's overwhelming. And how did you cope with this situation? Did you uh, sometimes tell yourself that, no, I'm not making this film anymore, uh, things like that, or how did you cope? But, you know, talking about all this war situation, I mean, uh, the war is going on in Ukraine for the eighth year. So it has changed everyone in my country, all people in the war zone and also people in peaceful cities. And uh, as to me personally, um, I did many different things in uh, war zone before because I also I was also shooting documentary films about women who take part in this Russian Ukrainian war that was some other project and my husband he's a writer but he used to serve in the Ukrainian armed forces so you know it's like you are trying to look at all this situation from some different angles and uh, also to cope with this situation somehow, because, you know, sh when I was shooting this film about this family, about these people who live there and shoot, and they are shooting the uh, amateur films about themselves, I was also asking myself, what can I do in the times of war? And uh, uh, what is my goal? What is my, I don't know, so I can grab my camera and I can tell stories about people around me, people like this family, people like other. So, so but I'm still trying to find these uh, answers. I mean, for your question, mm -hmm. I, I'm still, I, I'm not really sure that I found the way how to cope with all of these situations. Mm -hmm. I understand. Um, so, I wonder, as it's a very overwhelming process, uh, I wonder how long did it take uh, to complete the whole filming process, filmmaking process? I mean, the shooting and the post-production and everything. We spent uh, one year with our characters. We have been coming again and again to the uh, town and we have been living together with them so we spend a lot of time together but uh, generally I had to work on this film like two years and a half something like that so that was our journey and uh, and that was not easy I mean this experience is really tough but at the end of the day uh, I'm glad that this film is uh, really successful and uh, it has very interesting festival journey and i'm i'm happy that different people around the globe loved our characters and they got new something new about my ukraine and everything that is hap happening right now here so mm -hmm. um Talking about film festivals, the film has uh, won several awards from different festivals. Like uh, you have an award from Sundance Film Festival, Zurich Film Festival, etc. So uh, why do you think people like this film uh, this much? Do you have any idea? Do you have any? Mm -hmm. I think that not everyone in the world knows what does it mean to live in the war times? But um, all people in the world know um, what um, are some challenging uh, circumstances. And of course, I mean that all of, all of us, we need some basic things to rely on, family, friends, love, art. And probably our story is some kind of universal because uh, 
this family, this single mother and four kids, uh, they are full of energy and they are not only surviving in the times of war. They try to live fully, they try to do something and they are not just uh, silent victims of this war. They try to tell stories about themselves to other people. So I guess um, our film has uh, this kind of uh, special energy, some promising things and maybe some optimistic things because uh, we should find some power to be cheerful, to, I don't know, to see that light in the end of that black tunnel around us because we have a lots of uh, challenges and, mm -hmm. and even these uh, covid times are also very frustrating for all of us so i guess this story is some kind of universal probably that is the answer yes uh, talking about optimism i have a question related to that actually uh, even though the film takes place in the middle of the world, the family's approach to the war is quite uh, optimistic, you know, bombs are falling out of the sky, but the family's uh, love for cinema is not weakening. Uh, as a filmmaker, uh, actually you have given the answer uh, a minute before, but do you think cinema uh, has a healing effect on people? Uh, as a filmmaker, what do you think? I hope so, because I still make films and I want to believe they can change the world somehow. And, you know, I was observing our characters and when I saw how they are shooting their own videos, own films about themselves. And, you know, that was also their way to deal with their trauma, because when you try to react, uh, to repeat everything that happened to you before, you probably try to change your attitude to all this uh, challenging experience. And uh, yes, I believe that cinema and art has some power in these dark times. And uh, it also makes some bridges between people and also between people around uh, the world and from some very different uh, dimensions, uh, like different countries, different, I don't know, different worlds. So I hope we do something important. Mm -hmm. uh, Irina, thank you so much for your answers and thank you for joining uh, this Q&A session. Um, thank you. Good luck, good luck with the future work. I wish you to enjoy the screening. I'm, I'm talking to the viewers and to have a nice festival. Thank you so much.